Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I have a fantastic interview between me, Mercer, and Thomas about the Enneagram and the MBTI. I just want to let you know, this is one of my last videos before I'm going to focus most of my energy on my other channel. So I have a link to my other channel down below. Be sure to check it out. Hey everybody, guess what? So I have my special guests here, Mercer and Thomas from Mongolian Mindset. Be sure to check out the work. I have, I'll have all their links down below. Today, we're going to talk about the Enneagram plus the MBTI. So when you combine it two, you could have like every shade of every single type and kind of this is a really rich way to be able to type anybody. So welcome you two. Uh, hey guys, this is uh, Mercer from Mongolia Mindset. And uh, today we're going to be talking about um, a little bit of insights that we found with uh, interaction styles and temperament and Enneagram. So we've noticed that we've been able to identify certain types uh, based off the parameters that Linda Barron's has given us. But we've always noticed that some of them are a lot different than others. Um, for mm -hmm. instance, we have able to identify uh, INTJs and the parameters for finding an INTJ would be if you were talking to them, they would be responding, which means they're introverted. Um, they would be direct, so which means they're specific, concise, and to the point. Um, their progression, so they're really focused on the process or um, of how to do something. They're going to be um, TEFI, which is, you know, you guys should know what that is, and SENI, as well as abstract, which is they care about the what if, uh, philosophies, things outside of the five senses. Um, systematic means they, they like to get a system or control over whatever they're uh, trying to do. Right. Um, so, so yeah. Thomas is an example of an INTJ here, right? So, mm -hmm. So can you tell me, so these are markers to be able to tell if someone's an INTJ. So mm -hmm. perhaps you could tell me how does the Enneagram come to play here? So how Enneagram comes to play, I'm just going to take a big picture perspective. So what ends up happening is you have an INTJ, well, you have people that online or whatnot, they'll just prescribe a certain formula or um, ways to improve for um, a certain Enneagram, whether they notice it or not. And usually that Enneagram is Enneagram 5 INTJs, which is what we've noticed. Um, those are going to be your guys like Mark Zuckerberg. Um, those are going to be your Magnus Carson. Your Thomas uh, Biggins. Is that your last name? That's Vegan. Vegan. Okay. All yeah, right. Those, those are going to be your Thomas Biggins. Um, they're, they're the more right. uh, analytical INTJs. All right. Um, we'll, we'll let Thomas talk about it. Yeah, because that's what Thomas is. So basically you're a, a a type five Enneagram uh, INTJ, right? So tell me how that's like to be one. Um, well, okay. So, so uh, type five, um, or they're overly analytical basically. Yeah. And how would you say you differ from the other INTJs? Okay. Well, I mean, I think just to kind of put things in perspective, something that Mercer and I have like noticed and had trouble like kind of making sense of for a while now is just like these INTJs that fall outside of the norm. Um, so like some INTJs, I think more so with women than men, but quite a bit actually are type four. And it kind of took us a while to kind of figure out what's like these, according to the um, interaction styles, these people are obviously their INTJ, but they're not type five Enneagram. Um, you know, you know, it, back in, you know, however long ago this was like a year ago, two years ago, when we first started getting into this, um, we didn't have Enneagram. So we didn't have like a kind of framework for understanding uh, why are there these diff different kinds of INTJs? Mm. But learning about Enneagram, it kind of helps us tie it all together um, because, you know, the type four um, INTJs, they're not very analytical. Um, they're more so about like their feelings, like the, their feelings, other people's feelings, um, their authenticity, their individuality. Um, and in the negative, they can be very envious, um, very envious people. Um, they, mm. they see people around them who, have things that they wish that they had. And sometimes they can have hatred towards other people. Yeah. That's not really like type five though. And the type five is like when people talk about like stereotypes regarding INTJs, like, Oh, they have their, like the, the dark, the dark energy, um, you know, dark energy, quote unquote, evil, quote unquote, like, uh, the, you know, kind of like have Asperger's, like, you know, they'll say that about Mark Zuckerberg and certain INTJs, like, Oh, they, they suck with social skills. The, the type fours are not like that at all. Um, okay. Type four is like type fours that I could think of are like people like uh, I don't know if you know like Koyla Ray. She's a rapper. Um, she's you know she 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 complains about people not accepting her music and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, very, a, a lot of times type fours, uh, INTJs or even other types, they could be very whiny, very complainy, mm -hmm. um, complaining that people oh, people that people don't like me, people don't accept me, that that kind of stuff. And again, with with type five, they're not they're not going to talk about that. 
So um, a type four, is it, do they have like amplified intrude feeling or is that not the case? I, I would agree with that. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah, it's like their FI runs the show a lot of the time. Um, so, so where does your introvert feeling come to play? Does it play out differently? It does come to play. I think it's just more so I have a better development of my thinking functions where with the type four, they, they don't really lean on their thinking as much. Um, I think some of them might try to develop like their TI or their TE, but uh, they don't they, they don't develop it the way that a, um, a type five does because the type five really leans into those functions They could, again, because they're, they're overly analytical. They're over, like, they're overly analytical to the point where um, they can have trouble taking action because they're just going, they're just kind of like, you know, they're overanalyzing something going around circles, like trying to collect, oh, let me collect more data about this. Let me survey more people instead of just, uh, you know, what type five soft struggles with is they struggle with S E and they struggle with F E. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. that's. Think what so we're it's in white, some ways amplified, intuition and possibly the um, the six function too right the, yeah, so I like think, kind of like um, yeah. you want to do everything in a very like measured way you want to uh collect all the information first and before taking action mm -hmm. okay. yeah i think that uh yeah enneagram five intjs can be confused for intps um I, sometimes people think i'm an intp and i also see sometimes other people online they they either think intjs who think that they're intps or vice versa people who think that the intj is an intp because they, they can seem very ti heavy um mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. so what's another example so can you give me another type that you could see this enneagram uh mbti combo taking working? so th there's also like my uh um type which is entj mm -hmm. um you can have one that's like myself who's eight okay mm -hmm. and the eight entj is usually the stereotypical power hungry entj but you can also have a three enneagram um entj and they're not as power hungry as someone who's an eight mm -hmm. um or even on top of that sometimes rare you can get a I, uh, entj which is a uh enneagram five and they're gonna be more uh analytical than myself um they're going to struggle with action. They're not going to be as power hungry. They're, they're um, like more of like the advisor types. Well, the the five will be more the advisor type, but they'll, they'll be more analytical um, when it comes to things because what we notice is that uh, five is the the analytical enneagram. Like it is the most intelligent enneagram of all of them. So if you, if you fall into that hole, you still have the INTJ tool, I mean, ENTJ tools, but you will express that through an enneagram five is, if, is what we're saying here. Um, so like somebody like myself, they'll be like, you know, people can easily identify that I'm an ENTJ because of the simple fact that I'm very, very like ambitious. I'm going for something, a very strong will. Like I don't back down. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's just easy to identify me because the stereotypical, um, ENTJ that a lot of people come to agreement with on is, uh, Enneagram eight. But if you fall outside that, like type three, type three is all about achievements and stuff. Um, sometimes I look at them and I see them as kind of more of a mindless achievement. Like, as in like, when I do something, it's always a purpose. Um, it's got something, it's got something in line with it, but a lot of times they can do things just for an achievement. So like, let's say for instance, if I'm playing chess, I have an idea of using that later on in life. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just not just about to just do it for like achievement or anything. It's like, okay, I want to be able to predict more moves ahead of than anybody else in the future what gives me the best opportunity to do that that's playing chess as in they would probably play chess just for achievement to be good if you right. get what I'm excellent and this is a perfect um, time for me to advertise for my article that i wrote about the connection between life and chess so be sure to check that out <laughs> and so like um now with the thoughts like i kind of imagine when you're talking about five that for instance carl young when he wrote about expert thinking he mentioned about charles darwin so mm -hmm. I'm guessing he would be an example of a five ENTJ. I don't know uh, Charles Darwin that well. I, I really find it hard to sometimes type people from the past because you're going off a like uh, you're going off what people said about them, and right. that cannot actually be true. So you yeah. you gotta leave yourself open for that. Uh, yeah, but it's therapy. like a very like intellectual approach that's very like uh, data driven, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um I, I can say one that i would probably present as an entj who's most likely a five would be ray dalio ray dalio mm -hmm. um he he's very direct specific 
concise and to the point. Uh, but he's more analytical. He can crunch some numbers better than anybody. It's almost scary to like the to the way that Ray Dalio can crunch those numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, to where like when he's around other ENTJs, they're like, yo, he's like brainiac, you know, or like you'll see like like other ENTJs like Patrick Bet David, like, you know, I can't do what Ray Dalio does. Like he'll just fa- flat out say, like, I just can't do that. Like I'm not a mathematician, is what he would call it. Yeah. Um, so those guys are gonna be in that realm. But like I said, they're going to express their tools, which is like we believe you come into the world with a set of tools. So Thomas has INTJ tools, you have INFP tools, I have ENTJ tools, but they express it through the Enneagram differently. Yeah. Um, so, so your ar- your argument here is that the MBTI type is a tool. Like you're talking about the function specifically, those are your tools mm-hmm. by which to mm-hmm. carry out the the mm-hmm. purpose of the Enneagram type. That's 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 pretty much what we've noticed. Um and like like we said, like Depending on the Enneagram, you will have certain things that you have to work on. Um, for instance, if you're a five, then you're going to have to get over paralysis analysis. That's probably going to be one of the big things that you have to get over with. Um, when you're an eight, like myself, you're going to have to work on your energy, your presence, uh, work on under- being more vulnerable. Those are going to be things that you need to work on. Um, if you're a three, then you have to somewhat have to work on your identity and finding your identity and who you are. Um, because a lot of times they can attach themselves to an identity um, with the achievements and whatnot. Okay. And not who they really are as a person. Um, and now can you perhaps maybe share some personal examples? Like maybe Thomas, like help, helping yourself kind of get out of analysis paralysis were some useful things that you do as a five. It's a struggle for type fives. Um, I think you find some type fives who are able to like, uh, they they just, they're able to get beyond it, you know? Um where they just they 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 take action, but really it's yeah, it's just it's an it's an inability or like a difficulty taking action um, with yeah. type five. So okay, how about for you, Mercer? Um, so with myself, um, I kind of always knew it deep down um, that I had this very this energy that was kind of scary um, to a lot of people. Um, so like even before Instagram or whatever, I would kind of if I was going out, I would pick certain types of clothes that would kind of like take my energy down a little bit. Mm. Um, so that means like make me more approachable. Mm. Um, and those shirts would be like floor pattern, button downs, things like that. Um, mm-hmm. kind of bring down my energy. Um, but I didn't know to the d- degree of it um, as Enneagram. Like when I read about the chapter eight, um, I noticed that it's kind of like behind the scenes. It's kind of like a deal I made with myself um, with the devil, which is, I believe every Enneagram does that. Um, but what that looks like is that I, for, I gave up my feelings for power. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of the objective of eight. Um, they subdue the, how they feel and they never want to be vulnerable or whatnot. So with that being said, I have been working not so much on being vulnerable, <laughs> vulnerable, <laughs> being a more he- healthier version, you know? Um, right trying to uh, express it better, like being more, uh, showing more gratitude to people. Yeah. As in, if someone just told me I'm an ENTJ, it doesn't really hit home. You know, as if when you read about type eight, it's like, okay, there was a time in my life where I felt like I needed to do this, or I needed to make this transformation into this person. Mm. And these are the elements that were going on. Um, Instagram even gets into like childhood and what stuff like that. So like somebody like yourself, who's an INFP, um, probably grew up in a household where their voice wasn't really heard that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they- uh, Mercer, they, you're tapping into my soul. <laughs> uh, but they take a type nine approach to things, which is like what I want doesn't really matter as long as everybody else get what they want. Mm-hmm. Um, so they take a role like that. Um, yeah. so, I feel like I'm in the psychotherapy room right now. You did, you're doing a good job, Mercer. You should take my job. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very powerful tool, man. Um, and so notice is that um, because what we do is we type on our channel, we type celebrities. Um, and that's the way that we've really gotten people to, like, you know, subscribe to our channel and grow into our group. And we do free type of sessions as well. And what we've been able to do is just conduct research and notice, like, okay, we see in this Instagram a lot with this certain type, okay? Or we're seeing this Instagram a lot with this certain type. And we're like, okay, then what makes this different, you know? Um, and what we notice is like a lot of people give advice on how to, how to find a certain type or understand a certain type. But the thing is, is that they're basically looking at the Enneagram, whether they notice or not. Right. A lot of things they're, mm-hmm. they're pinpointing on the Enneagram. Like I've noticed, you know, um, 
being typed by certain people. Um, I noticed that they just practically just hunted the, by eight anagram, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. But right. somebody like us, you know, we we hunt direct. If you're an ENTJ, we, you'd be direct, initiating outcome, um, systematic, pragmatic, um, mm -hmm. right. abstract. You know, we would look for those metrics, TEFI and uh, SENI. We would look for those metrics, but a lot of people don't do that. So, you know, they may mistype somebody or there, there'll be some people that, you know, that they're not part of the norm. You know? right. We found a reason why they don't fit inside of the norm. So, so what are some like unusual combinations that may not, like people might often mistype? Uh, like uh, unusual combinations between like type and Enneagram. Um, right. Well, th definitely, like what we said with the I the INTJ fours, we think that's uh, that that's one of the things that a lot of people just don't get. And we think I think Mercer and I are on the same page as far as we think that a lot of INTJ fours are mistyped, probably as like probably as like ISFPs or certain other type. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So ENT um, ENTJ fives as well. Um, well, I think that you know ENTJ fives they probably often don't feel like ENTJs. Mm -hmm. um, like someone like Ray Dalio, he actually thinks that he's an ENTP, and I think a lot of people actually buy into that. Mm -hmm. Um, again, because he's much different than you know all the other ENTJs out there. You know, he's very mm -hmm. TI heavy. U usually, usually ENTJs, you know, they're they're great at a lot of things, but TI is something they struggle with. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not easy to develop the fifth function. Like, and I think Mercer and I agree agree on that. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I think other other combinations that could be weird. Um, I think you find with a lot of famous people that they're type threes, regardless of what their uh, what their actual like MBTI four letter code is. So, right. I think you find like a lot of a lot of famous ESTPs are actually uh, type three, whereas we think that the stereotypical uh, ESTP is a type seven. Um, mm -hmm. So then when you when you have ESTPs who are type three, they don't exactly like the, the the description of ESTPs doesn't really resonate with them. They're like, no, I'm not an ESTP. I'm an ENTP or I'm, a, I'm some other type. So they, they just like, refuse to accept that they're they're an ESTP, but it's because they're a type three and they're there. They kind of go against they go against the stereotype of what an ESTP actually is. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, you can. I, I, so I those, mean, I those think are very driven that. ESTPs. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like you take yeah, you take someone like The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Like very early on in life, he, he in life he made a decision like, okay, I'm gonna go into the business. I'm gonna be a wrestler, and it, it was like the best decision that he ever made in his life. And mm -hmm. his, like, I just I seen something the other day about this. this is why I'm bringing it up. But uh, and his father wanted to fight him on it. Like, no, this is this is a stupid idea. You shouldn't do this. And like he stood up for himself and he went for it. And it, obviously, like he's had uh, he's had a phenomenal phenomenal career between uh, wrestling and acting. But uh, I think most ESTPs, yeah, they just kind of like they, they drift along in life. They don't make they don't make uh, those kinds of de decisions. Right. I see. I, I see. I see. So like yeah. certain types would be more likely to be famous. So like I remember seeing something in Socionics where the beta and gamma quadra are more likely to have famous people because of the there's the expert sensing, right? Plus, like, but probably if it's in combination with like uh, type three qualities. Type right? three and type four. Type right. three and type four. Right. Are usually um, going to be famous people. Yeah, in ter in terms of raw numbers, yeah, probably. Yeah, I'd say type three, type four. Um also a lot a lot of ENTPs though, um hmm. are, are famous. Mm -hmm. okay. Whether whether you have ENTPs <sighs> there's so many of them. Oh my god. <laughs> there's so many of them. And and the the way you can really find an ENTP is they're usually talking about suffering a lot. They believe you mm -hmm. can suffer to be great. Like that's their number one thing they take. Which on. type? Uh, ENTPs. Um, okay. What I've noticed is, generally speaking, they're usually integrant for whether they realize it or not. Mm -hmm. um, and um, who, who makes that argument? Like, is there an example of somebody? Oh, you you mean like examples of like ENTPs that are, are that are fours? Yeah, who who like suffering? Oh, uh, that's just most of them in general. They believe like uh, strength comes from suffering. Like, uh, like I I will say, um, if you get into it, um, you'll notice that. If you watch a lot of, I don't know if people are very familiar with Andrew Tate, but if you watch a lot of Andrew Tate's uh, stuff, he will talk yeah. about suffering. You need to suffer. As a man, you need to right. suffer. You need to do this. That's an ENTP mindset. Um, they believe that with their SI inferior, if they suffer, they can become anything they need to be or be great at whatever. Um, so you'll see them talk about that a lot. Uh, my older but brother. How, how does that work? Is that like they, they get into their introvert sensing to do that? What? So what, what that. They, I guess they kind of build it through that. Um, they build like strength or like they, they build character through that. Like they believe that fire is the like 
is the way for them. Mm. Um, and I've noticed that with my own older brother, um, um, he suffered in silence, you know, my entire life. I never really understood like, I was like, what the hell's wrong with this guy? You know, like right. if we ever did anything, um, like if we were down to our last dollar mm -hmm. to eat, he will let me eat mm -hmm. and not himself. And that's because he would rather suffer and build the strength through suffering than uh, actually eat. He would rather me eat and him suffer. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of always, that's kind of always played out in, in our lives. Uh, and I, as a kid, I was like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? You know, like, like I just never really understood that until I came into Enneagram, and I'm like, yo, my brother's an SP4 Enneagram uh, ENTP, mm -hmm. and he cares more. He believes suffering is the way, you know? Mm -hmm. He believes that's what builds a man, that's what builds character, that builds mm -hmm. strength. Um, and you'll get, like, some ENTPs that will be more outgoing about their suffering, like Kanye West. He's a mm -hmm. social four, and what social fours do is they openly share their suffering. But, and like in our on our channel, we kind of make a joke about like them crying and stuff, you know, like just like, oh, you know, I lost my life, or my friend deserted me, or like uh I can't even see my kids. Like, you know, they're out, like they're out there just showing it, as opposed to my brother, who is a counter to that sin, he doesn't show it. He will not let you know that he's suffering. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, Interesting. So a lot of times when you look at him, a lot of people just um like like a ENTP being a four, that's just like right. a normal thing for them. Like that's right. that's usually if you get an ENTP, that mo mo uh, most of the time they're going to be a four. Hmm. Uh, but what I was just describing there is the subsets inside of the four. Um, there's three of those: uh, sub uh, prevalence, uh, social, hmm. and sexual. Um, so like if I was describing the ENTP, you have someone like my brother who suffers in silence and is strong. Um, and he uses it for power. Mm -hmm. And then you have the social one who kind of like flaunts it out there, they're suffering so that people come to them. Oh my God, That's Kanye, I can't believe that no one, people do that to you. Or mm -hmm. oh, I can't believe you do like it's their approach. Thing. And then you have the sexual uh, four, which is like the Joker, where he wants to make other people suffer. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So they can go through those, they can oscillate between those three. Sometimes you'll see like, and like the Joker, you know, he was suffering in silence or whatnot before. And then there's something that happened to him and he flips the switch and he's like, everybody else got to suffer too. Well, they got to suffer just as much as I suffered. And that's going to be more of your sexual, uh, sexual uh, four. And uh, what that looks like, that is the most angriest Enneagram of all. So right. they'll get confused as my Enneagram, as an eight, but they're worse to me. Like when my brother gets, when my brother gets mad, his anger is totally different than mine. I mean, like, I'm, like, up there when it comes to angry, but his his shit is, like, scary angry. Hmm. Like, to where, like, you feel like, you know, you, you don't even know what he might do to you type anger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, like, but they describe that um, in this book here um, with, you know, Enneagram 4 Sexual being the most angriest type. Mm -hmm. So That's that's pretty interesting. Okay. Uh, Thomas, uh, add something to that? Um, yeah, um, but D David Goggins, we, uh, we think he's the counter type or, or is yeah. that where we're going with him? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, so, so that's, that's, he's an, he's another ENTP and like, he basically just talks about like the need to suffer and the guys, he's just oh like, God. he's, he's just an animal. He's, he's always running marathons. He's always, he's always putting himself through hell. Mm -hmm. And like, he, that's like kind of like, he almost gets his meaning out of life doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Um, and I mean, like, I think that. Well, like we, I think we were saying earlier with type, uh, type four, they can, they can be more FI heavy, even like as an ENTP. And I think that's why a lot of people, uh, I don't know where, what your stance is on this, but a lot of people think that Johnny Depp is like an INFP or they think he's an FI user. But I, I, but the Mercer and I agree that he's an ENTP and he's, he's actually just a type four. Um, and type fours, you know, they can be, you know, again, they, be, they can be very, very art, very artistic, very much about their own identity and their own feelings. Mm -hmm. um and i think that's that actually plays into why he gets mistyped because i think people people have this idea, idea that uh entps are normally type seven i think they can be type seven but i think uh yeah like mercer's saying they're actually more frequently um they're going to be a, a, some version of a type four um mm -hmm. okay. so i'll elaborate on the david goggins so david goggins um he's always talking about like upping the next level of suffering um mm -hmm. to the point to where he could do million dollars interviews 
um, and not have to do what he does. But he decided to go in what um, I forget what the term is, but fight fires and like one of these areas where he's getting paid twelve dollars a fucking hour. Mm. Someone like David Goggins doesn't have to do that, but suffering is all he knows. Suffering is what builds him strength. That's what allowed him to be a Navy SEAL. You know, um, that's mm. intense suffering, and they channel that for strength and power. Um, and if you read, you know, the, the section on that, you'll see that that's what they are. Um, mm -hmm. but when it comes to, um, that, like you, people just, you have to, it's like we said, it's the missing, the missing piece that we have noticed is that mm -hmm. you, know, you have type and then, you know, there's something they're missing. It's just like, okay, then why is this person so much different than this person? Well, why does this person, you know, seem to be good with this function, but they seem to be this. And it's like, okay, they have a different integrant. Right. Um, yeah. So like we said, like type four is going to have the same type of, like I said, they're an INTJ. Thomas is an INTJ. Um, and people always talk about SC inferior. Um, it's going to hit them differently, you know, right. uh, based on integram, um, because they're going to do the work. And especially if you get a type three, they may have show you no signs of SE inferior at all, you know, mm. um, because they're, you know, performers, they're getting things done. Um, one that I would say is Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods is INTJ, but he's a three. So he's he's always performing. Um, mm -hmm. So you won't see as much as you would see in somebody like Thomas because he's going to do paralysis analysis. He's going to be analyzing every move that he takes, everything that he does. How about like in terms of like using this as like a personal development tool like what how do you see it could be used in that kind of fashion so uh what, what i've noticed is that like enneagram actually goes through these steps of how you can improve yourself and then mm -hmm. it can talk more about your childhood and a lot of things go back to like childhood things that you have to deal with and enneagram actually uh, approaches that and not from a cognitive function standpoint and what we've noticed is with cognitive function standpoint like everyone's all over the fucking place with the shit you know like they they don't know like oh you know how can i work on this how can i do that but enneagram lays out ways that you can improve yourself whether it be this enneagram book here and it talks about the nine levels right or you know you got beatrice chestnut the 27 um types subtypes subtypes mm. but it lays out a path for you to work on yourself like whether it be uh, things that I need to do, like becoming more vulnerable. So that'd be uh, going into the more true um, side of myself. Right. Um, and how you can go about that and how you can incorporate that. And to me, it just noticed, like, even when I was looking at the, sub, uh, the subsets, like sometimes when bad things happen to me or like when things don't go the way I want to, my brain seems to want to go sexual. And what that means is it wants to go into the fuck everybody. Fuck these people. These people are worthless. These people are trash. Mm -hmm. Like we don't, I, you don't need them. You know, mm -hmm. you don't need them. Like they're, they're just in your way. They're just collateral damage. Like I can flip to that switch when things don't go. And and now I notice like, Hey, now, now I got a term for that. Like that's more of the sexual side of myself coming out. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, Hey, you know what? That's not the way things work. Mm -hmm. I've always known like, Hey, like that side comes out of me, but now I know how to term it. And now I know how to say, hey, you know, you're just overacting. You need to get over it. You need to self-reflect. You need to relax mm. um, because that's not the way. Yeah, that sounds like it's like it's incredibly useful. So you could look at the your Enneagram and you could see like when one of those function stacks, like how do they express themselves? And you could see like the positive, negative expressions of it. And just I think what you're doing is like it's like you're just like mindfully observing how it's expressed and you can turn it around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, for instance, uh, another thing was with an INFP. I noticed in yourself, it's like, hmm, Leon's a lot different than other INFPs. Like, mm -hmm. why is that? INFPs struggle to get on camera. INFPs mm -hmm. struggle to do anything. Uh, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but they're kind of lazy to a degree. But that's the, that's the sin usually for I INFPs is right. lazy. Um, that's Enneagram 7 sin, you know. Um, but there's always a counter to that sin. So the counter actually goes against the scene and you'll notice somebody like yourself going out there in the park with your sign. Mm -hmm. right. I don't know. No, I ain't a P that fucking do that shit. You know, my I ain't right. a P best friend, you know, she struggles, you know, going to the gym or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but um, like to see somebody like yourself, you know, you may think to yourself, man, Leon, not an INFP, but it explains why he has the differences that 
he has versus the other INFPs. Right. But before that, you'd be like, first thing you would think, INFP jumping on camera, INFP like putting yourself out there, INFP doing all that. That's not no damn INFP. But this explains why he does that. Okay, great. So it's like the missing, the missing piece there. Excellent. Is there anything else you both want to talk about here? Um, maybe just to, like to mention that I think it's important to combine um, Enneagram with uh, like with the knowledge of typology or like with the knowledge of the functions and interaction styles. Because mm. I think, I mean, if I think if people are just going to study one, I think Mercer and I agree on this. It's probably more important to know Enneagram. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the thing is that it, it's the people have a really hard time trying to figure out their type, their MBTI or their Enneagram. And I think it's it helps to know both because if you know your type, then you know, well, okay, I'm most likely either one of like these two or these three Enneagrams. Uh, I think INTJs are more versatile than most of the other types where INTJs could be, they could be one, they could be three, four, five, possibly six, possibly eight. Um, most other types are not uh, not like that, like INFPs or ENFJs or ENTJs. Like usually there's like two or maybe three possible Enneagrams that you're likely to be. Mm -hmm. um so i think it's kind of important to know both um you know just like it, and again like mercer's saying it's like you you have your your tools which are like your functions but then you have your enneagram which is like how the functions are expressed so like a the way the way an entp uh expresses type four is going to be different compared to an intj or compared to another type that expresses type four um you know uh you know an intj is not necessarily going to talk about suffering as much as like an, e an entp uh i think intj like an intj4 is going to talk more so about uh like i was saying about coil array or even like doja cat or some of these intj performers out there where they just you know they, they complain that people don't accept them people don't like them that they just you know that they're you know they're whiny versus uh Yes, you know true. the counter type the counter type like david goggins or yeah you know like mercer's brother the counter type they're just going to suffer in silence um and to the point where no one even knows that they're suffering um, a lot of the time you know um i don't think uh there might be intj counter types i don't think it's really that common though um i don't think we found one yet okay. but uh, yeah just yeah the whole point i was saying saying is i just think it's kind of important to know both at least uh from from like a type typology standpoint yeah mm -hmm. And yes, like, that's, um, yeah. Go ahead, Mercer. What I've noticed is that uh, if you could combine those two and you could figure out the more you can figure out like Enneagram and type, you get more predictive power. Um, mm -hmm. So, you knowing that Mercer's a type eight and he's an ENTJ, you can almost sometimes you can predict what I'm going to do because I'm a type mm -hmm. eight ENTJ. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to like if you're like, okay, all ENTJs do that, you're going to fucking make a mistake there. Uh, because if I'm an ENTJ and I'm a three, you might make a mistake. If I'm an ENTJ and I'm a five, you're going to make a mistake. Um, if I'm an ENTJ and I'm sexual, you might make a mistake. So like when you understand the Enneagram and you understand type, you get a little bit more predictive power. Like, okay, Leon's most likely to do this because he's a counter to INFPs as opposed to my best friend who's INFP. I can predict what she's going to do because I know her Enneagram too. Um, so that's where you kind of get predictive power there. Um, which okay. is what I think most people really want right. um, is predictive power. Like, uh, can I predict what my friend's going to do? You get way more predictive power once you learn Enneagram and type. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. This seems like a pretty useful um, way to go about things to combine uh, MBTI and also Enneagram. So I, I feel like you both described it very, very well. So a lot of the information here in, in this uh, interview is very rich. So I'm going to have... Um, their information down below is a Mongolian mindset. Uh, be sure to check out their stuff. It's pretty fascinating. So thank you for being on the show, both of you. Thank you, Leon. Yeah, thanks, Leon.